everyone, it's Monica and today I am here on quite a chilly first day of spring. It's actually in New York City we're supposed to be getting like 10 inches of snow tonight over the next like day and I am just flabbergasted at this weather to be honest. But today I wanted to come and have sort of a cozy vibe kind of video because I'm gonna be talking about something that's a bit more personal and I thought that that type of setting would be ideal for this, you know? I have like a stack of books right here that I'm just gonna push to the side. <laughs> so today, as you might be able to tell from the title of this video, I wanted to talk about some of the books that are the ones that I really turn to in times of need. These are the books that have become over the past few years a source of refuge and comfort in times of need and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about that and I'd love to hear from you guys as I'm going through this if there are books, music, movies, whatever, like things that you go to when you need comfort, like what what is that for you? Like for me, sometimes it's a book, sometimes it's a certain film, sometimes it's a song. And I'm always really interested to hear like what that media might be for other people. What are the the things that really sort of ground you? And those are the books that I'm going to be talking about today in this video. This video is being sponsored by Simon & Schuster in celebration of Emergency Contact by Mary H. K. Chui. Uh, this is, I think, just one of the most beautiful books ever. I just love looking at it. It's so pretty. This is a book that I've been so excited for. You guys know that I am really passionate about reading diverse stories and that on a personal level I really like to look for books that are written by Asian authors and featuring Asian characters. That's something that's really important to me as someone who is Asian and grew up very much so lacking in that kind of um, those kinds of stories. This book is about two people who kind of become each other's emergency contact. You have Penny and Sam who are both sort of at new beginnings in their life. Penny is beginning college after sort of her a non-eventful high school which I can very much so relate to. Meanwhile Sam is sort of at the end of his rope but both of them are striving towards creative goals. Penny wants to be a writer, Sam wants to be a filmmaker, and in the story they meet and end up exchanging numbers and they just sort of end up communicating via text and becoming, you know, that sort of emergency contact for each other. And I find that really interesting because I have friends like that. A lot of the like emotional things that we were going through, we were sharing with each other and it was so helpful to have this sort of like person who you could tell everything to and and pour yourself into but also not have that sort of pressure of of an actual relationship. I am so excited for this book and it comes out March 27th so just a few days away in case you are interested in it. I thought it made sense to sort of be inspired by Penny and Sam's story and talk about my own emergency contact reads. There's this quote that is, I think, my favorite quote of all time when it comes to reading and I think really summarizes what I'm trying to achieve with this video. And the quote is from The History Boys and it's, the best moments in reading are when you come across something, a thought, a feeling, a way of looking at things which you had thought special and particular to you. Now here it is, set down by someone else, a person you've never met, someone who even is long dead, and it is as if a hand has come out and taken yours. And for a lot of the books that I am talking about in this video, that is why these books are so powerful and important for me, because they are books that when I'm reading them, it's it is like, you know, someone has, has come and taken your hand and is sitting with you and, and is comforting you and being there. And, and that's what so many of these books are and why I love them so much and return to them over and over again. Now, some of them I, I love because they just make me happy and joyful, uh, a couple of these. But, you know, there are definitely a few that just are very much so like a warm cup of tea on a cold night. One of the first books that I want to talk about is one that I realized recently I haven't talked about much on this channel and it is a book that had such a huge impact on me and that is How to Build a Girl by Caitlin Moran. Now this is a story about Joanna who is a young girl growing up in England and she is coming from a family that is impoverished and so it deals a lot with 
the the shame of poverty and it especially deals with how you build yourself as a person when you go from being you know an adolescent to a teenager and that sort of coming of age story it's actually one of my favorite reviews that I've ever filmed on this channel. One of the things that I really love about this book is that it talks a lot about cynicism and about the persona that people can often create for themselves and how dangerous it can be to create yourself into a person in order to please other people. And that's very much so the the message of the book and the theme of the book. I would highly recommend this one if you're a fan of Lady Bird. I think you'll really really enjoy it. Or if you're a fan of the movie Almost Famous because it's there's definitely some similarities there. But I did want to share a quick quote from the story that had a huge impact on me and is one that I still look back on today and the line is, it is a million times easier to be cynical and wield a sword than it is to be open-hearted and stand there holding a balloon and a birthday cake with the infinite potential to look foolish. And I think that's, you know, that's a huge part of Joanna's story. There's also this one section of the book that is from when she takes her first flight. And every single time I'm on a flight, I think of this line because basically she gets on this flight and she's so scared and the flight takes off and it's a really cloudy day. But as they get higher and higher, the sun comes out because you go above the clouds. And so in this story, Joanna thinks, I am getting incredibly high on a single astounding fact that it's always sunny above the clouds. Always. That every day on earth, every day I've ever had was always secretly sunny after all. Um, and I am gonna try to not cry right now, but I think that that, that line, like I remember when I read that, it just like, I don't know, it's, it's such a simple, obvious fact, right? But for some reason, like the way that she wrote it and, and the point when it was written in the story and the, at the point in my life when I read it where I was, you know, not in the best place mentally. It was such an important line and a reminder of the fact that like, no matter how cloudy the day is, how bad the, your, your day is seeming, there's always a tomorrow, there's, there's always, you know, a silver lining, there, there's always something good to look for in the world. And that was so incredibly important to me when I read it at the time and it's still something that I look back to and just really value this whole book. I just love it so much. I think it's fantastic. I highly recommend reading it. I debated not talking about Harry Potter in this video because it just, it's so obvious, right? Like, of course, everyone is gonna say Harry Potter if you ask them this question. So I'm not gonna wax on poetic about Harry Potter and all of that. It is something that is a story that for me, for so many other people, is incredibly personal and something that is, you know, it is the most important story that I've ever read and will continue to be the most important story of my life. And I'm so thankful that it has been in my life because it has been a source of comfort to me at every dark point in my entire upbringing and existence basically since I first read the series. So the next book I want to talk about is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. This is actually the only Morgan Matson book I've ever read and I had put off reading her for so long because I mean I, I don't really know why. I really liked its depiction of grief. The main character loses her father. The story is basically about how you continue on after that. One of the reasons why this book is such an important one for me is because of the journey that you see Amy really go on in the book of dealing with the grief of surviving, the grief of continuing to live after losing someone who is like the mo one of the most important people in your life and watching her journey through that is so comforting to me and helpful to me as someone who, you know, I like to say lives with grief because I, I feel like when you lose someone who is so close to you, I personally don't feel like that grief ever fully goes away. And so for that reason, this book has been 
a major source of comfort for me over the past few years ever since I read it. The next couple books I want to talk about are maybe not quite as heavy as the last couple. Uh, the first one is one that I love because it just brings me so much joy and that is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is just one of my favorite books of all time. It just brings me so much joy. I think it is a brilliant satire. I think that it is such a fun world. I, I love everything she says in this book and I I don't know I just the characters are amazing. It's everything I wanted Cursed Child to be, not that it's a continuation of Harry Potter. There's so much depth to this story and what she's sort of critiquing about Chosen One stories and the different characters within them and the the you know the the way that we like to paint heroes and and use heroes I think is like so interesting and I love all of that it's so fascinating if I was still in college would totally write a paper about it because I think that this book has so much to unpack however <laughs> that's not why I turned to it in times of comfort I turned to it in times of comfort because I and Snow Baz trash. So Snow, Simon Snow and Baz, uh, they are basically the Harrow, Harry and Draco of this book and a lot of people have compared the sort of romance of this book to Drary Draco Harry fanfic. I get really frustrated when people use like the word fanfic as like a negative thing especially when like it's typically only because it's like a primarily woman driven genre of creation but that's a whole other topic of discussion. I just love Simon Snow and Baz. Part of that might be because I loved Drury so much growing up but I also think the characters are very much so their own. I think what I love so much about the book is that so often creators of various forms of media will you know have characters who are um, depicted in a way like have a relationship that's so close-knit that you as an audience like begin shipping them together um, and you know the creators might even bait the audience in a way and and have um, sort of lay breadcrumbs as though that might be something that could possibly happen only to never have it happen and it's so frustrating across the board when that sort of hope for a non-straight relationship might happen is continuously dashed and so it's so amazing to go into carry on and to see that exact type of relationship and to actually see it come to fruition um, and that's not a spoiler it's basically the whole premise of the book outside of that i don't really have like a deep meaningful reason as to why I continue to go back and reread this book and I do quite often other than the fact that it's so fun and just a world that I constantly want to be in and be reading about and can only hope that one day Rainbow will create more in this world although I doubt it'll happen but a girl can dream. The next two books are ones I'm not going to talk too much about because they're purely on here for nostalgia reasons and they are The Truth About Forever by Sarah Dessen and don't hate me, Twilight by Stephanie Mayer. So The Truth About Forever was like my favorite contemporary growing up. I was just in love with this book. It ruined all potential boyfriends for me. It just sort of like brings me back to being like a child and those being the kinds of books that I really related to and gravitated towards. Not like I don't anymore. I still love YA Contemporary, but that is definitely one that I just think back fondly of. Then of course I did say Twilight. Twilight is one that's just like, I know it's problematic. Like I, I went through like weird phases with Twilight where like I, when I first read it, I was obsessed. Like I had a blog devoted to Twilight. This was like early days Twilight. Like I read the first Twilight book when it first came out before there were any others. And I was all in, and it was, it's actually really interesting because a lot of people at my school were and this was before it was like being depicted as like a girl book and so lots of guys in my high school read Twilight and loved it and then once like in popular culture it was said like that oh this is like a new phenomenon a new phenomenon among women and teen girls I noticed that 
all of the teen guys that I was friends with no longer liked Twilight. And I thought that that was kind of interesting and sad. And I also noticed that I myself stopped liking Twilight. And like, I recognize that there are a lot of problematic elements in it. But I also think that the the hatred of Twilight that happened, at least like the intense hatred of it, maybe didn't match up with the content itself. Obviously, there are elements of Twilight that I don't agree with. But for me, it was when it was first being published, the first series that I really fell in love with since Harry Potter that I was just like super hooked into that I loved the characters the mythology and I just thought it was really fun. Yeah, I have a copy of it and every once in a while I will pull it out and <laughs> I will maybe read the first few chapters or something because there's something kind of comforting about this story that like, you know, I recognize isn't the height of literature and isn't everyone's favorite story and has some like problematic elements but <laughs> it's a story that also was really important to me at one point in my life and you know so I still sometimes turn to it when I just want something that is comforting and nostalgic and for me that's Twilight. It's also the movies although those are when I just need a really good laugh. The last book that I want to talk about is actually an author and that is Jane Austen. I love Jane Austen. I love her books, I love her stories, I love her characters especially and my favorite books by her are Emma and Pride and Prejudice and Northanger Abbey. Those are the top three but I love all of them except Mansfield Park. <laughs> But for me, definitely the books that I return to over and over again from her are um, those three. I will say that if I'm in an Austin mood, but I'm not in the mood to like read a whole book, I also am a huge fan of adaptations of Austin. My favorites are Clueless, which is my favorite Jane Austen adaptation of all time. If you didn't know, it's an adaptation of Emma and it's perfect. Uh, and my other favorite is the um, Emma mini series. I love that one. And then I also love the Pride and Prejudice film with Keira Knightley. I know that this is kind of controversial, but I am actually not a fan of the mini series. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's just not for me. I I think for me, I love the film because it's like it's so beautiful. And Joe Wright, I mean, can do no wrong. And it has my favorite pianist in it, Jean Yves Thibodeau, who's just oh, I just love the way he plays so much. They are the books that I just want my room to be very like atmospheric. You know, I want the all my lights off except for my fairy lights. I want a cup of tea, maybe a cookie, and just like curl up with Jane Austen. It's like my favorite thing in the world to do. I might actually do that after filming this video because that sounds really nice actually. <laughs> Those are my emergency contact books. They're the books that I, that sort of like I love from my soul is the way that I, I think of it. They're the books that have burrowed themselves into me and have become part of me and a, a, a real source of refuge for me over the years. And again, like I said at the beginning, I would love to hear if there are any books or other forms of media that you really turn to in times of need or anything like that. And again, thank you so much to Simon & Schuster for sponsoring this video. I am really excited that Emergency Contact is coming out. Also, if you're a fan of Rainbow, Rainbow Rowell, there's a good blurb from her on here where she says, smart and funny with characters so real and vulnerable you want to send them care packages. I loved this book. And this has been getting some comparisons to Eleanor and Park, which is one of my other favorite books of all time. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to y'all next time. Bye!